Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, Government Censorship of Organic Food Benefits, with Mishka Popoff. Mishka is a former organic farmer and USDA contract organic inspector. He has a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon, Canada. He's the author of History of Nitrogen for Warfare and Fertilizer. He's also the author, author of Is It Organic? The Inside Story of the Organic Industry. Some people won't like this book, but you will. He's also the policy advisor for the Heartland Institute, research associate for the Frontier Center for Public Policy. He has a, a great deal of experience in global organic industry and has contributed to foodborne organic bacterial outbreak literature. He also explains his position on outbreaks, including listeria, E. coli, salmonella, in organic food. Now, welcome with me, Mishka Papa. Mishka? Hello. Welcome to the show again. You've been a contributor in the past. Maybe you can update us on your current activities. Yes, Andy. Well, um, as you know and your listeners know, I do a lot of public speaking and consulting, and um, and I, I, I take a lot of flack in the media uh, and on the blogosphere uh, for my critical analysis of, of the organic industry. And basically, I'm, I'm highly critical because it's all based on record keeping and record checking. And, and I like to say, Andy, Bernie Madoff just proved <laughs> that that just doesn't work. You you can falsify paperwork any day of the week. And uh, so I, I've been trying for for going on. Uh, uh, 15 years now to get the organic industry to start testing, field testing to ensure that organic food is genuine, that no prohibited pesticides or herbicides were used, and also, as you mentioned in the intro, that that it's safe, that there are no uh, uh, uncom un uncomposted remnants of uh, of feces left in there from uh, from manure and such. So uh, I take a bit of flack for that. And recently, what has happened is some organizations. Um, they have started uh, finding out who my employers are and contacting my employers before I get there and trying to encourage them to fire me. And uh, that, I think, crosses the line. It, it was one thing to have heated debate in the blogosphere and in the media. I, I welcome that all the time. And, and sometimes uh, I even learned a few things from, from my critics. But uh, to, to go out secretly behind my back and try to get me fired, I, I think that's crossed the line. Mitchell, we certainly feel your passion as a fiery advocate. Let's chat for a minute. Basically, what is organic marketing and labeling? Well, yeah, and that's what really what it boils down to. The, the whole organic certification process really boils down to marketing. And actually, the USDA doesn't even hide this fact because they put the National Organic Program under their Department of Agricultural Marketing Services. They didn't put it under their scientific uh, uh, branch or inspection or testing or laboratory analysis or quality control. Any of these other departments would have made so much more sense uh, for, for anyone who's ever thought about, you know, geez, what does organic mean? Well, uh, sure, there's always going to be marketing, but that would be the last place where you would put the organic industry under the agricultural marketing service. It would be the last place because the, the whole argument is that, well, organic is better, it's purer, it's more natural. Some people even say it's more safe, which I would argue. But in any case, uh, it, it just sort of screams common sense that if you're going to make all those claims, well, then the next step should be to start proving them. And when you go through the USDA, as I say, there's their scientific research, inspection, testing departments, any of those would have made more sense. But uh, instead, what, so what we're left with is basically uh, uh, a marketing scheme, and it starts the minute the farmer puts pen to paper, Andy. Um, once the farmer starts filling out the paperwork, and there's a lot of it, estimates are that a farmer could spend about 15 hours a week keeping up on his paperwork. That's like a part-time job in addition to running your farm. Uh, that is all marketing, really, what it all is at the end of the day. And then it all gets uh, boiled down into a certificate which says that farmer and his products, his or her products, are organic, according to the USDA. 
And yeah, no, no testing. There's some companies that do some testing. There's a bit of end product quality control testing. That's all good. But what the USDA should be doing up front is testing in the field to make sure organic crops are genuine and safe. And 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 until they do that, we're we're just left with a a glorified marketing scheme. Well, Misha, it's interesting you say that because I've personally been to stores, grocery stores, that have sections that label organic and not organic. And invariably, the organic is more expensive. So in that sense, you are really a consumer advocate. What types of testing protocols do you feel prove that labels that are organic prove it that they're organic? Well, there are three. Uh, The most obvious in the consumer's mind would be uh, pesticide residue analysis. Most consumers think, well, it's organic, so it doesn't have any of those evil, toxic chemicals. Now, those chemicals are are fine as long as they're used according to the directions, but that's what they're paying for when they buy organic. They just don't want those chemicals there at all. So a a herbicide or pesticide residue analysis costs about 125 bucks. That's what you or or I would pay for it. I'm sure uh, uh, one of the agents of the USDA, of which there are 100 in America, I'm sure they could get a better price because they'd be running multiple samples through a single private uh, accredited lab. So 125 bucks per sample, that, 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 that's a really easy test, and that's for a, a multitude of prohibited substances. Uh, the next one, and this will be near and dear to your heart, Andy, is the uh, fecal coliform test, and it's like 20 bucks. It's so cheap, it's, it's, it's not even funny. And they're not doing this. I mean, their answer is, uh, well, no, we don't need to do it because the rules say that an organic farmer must fully compost manure before putting it on a field. Great. The rules also say you're, you're not supposed to cheat on your taxes and speed on the freeway or, 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 you know, or, or murder someone if it comes to that. We have rules for all sorts of things. And unless they're enforced through some sort of objective process, uh, then the rules get broken. So uh, there, there we are um, with, uh, you know, occasionally we'll hear about listeriosis or, or uh, hepatitis getting into the organic food chain. The answer is always from the organic activists, well, there's lots of problems in the regular food chain too. Well, sure there are, but the regular food chain isn't making a marketing claim that we are purer, more natural, better, and more nutritious and all this stuff. When you start doing that, you, you better prove it. So the, just to recap, that's a herbicide or pesticide residue analysis and then a fecal coliform test. Those are the first two. The third one that, that I uh, always wanted to do when I was still an organic inspector was to look for uh, the, uh, the possible synthetic fertilizer use. Synthetic fertilizer was really the first thing that, that the organic industry rejected. That was the first step they took, and it was back in the – Right after World War I, as soon as scientists figured out how to pull synthetic ammonium nitrate or nitrogen out of the Earth's atmosphere through an industrial process, immediately uh, the organic industry sprang into existence. It was called biodynamics there in the 1920s and later became the organic industry. And, and the way you look, the way you test, if you will, quote-unquote test, for possible synthetic ammonium nitrate use is you show up, you show up unannounced. So it's not even really a, you know, a, a lab test or anything of the sort. You just show up. But unfortunately, uh, organic inspectors are not allowed to show up until the crop is standing. The crop has to be sprouted out of the ground anywhere, you know, it has to, you know, anywhere from a millimeter to, to a foot tall. The crop has to be up. That, those are the rules. And when is fertilizer applied? Well, it's generally applied before the crop is even planted or during seeding. Um, never, never is fertilizer applied after a crop is up because it'll kill the crop. Now, now the exception to that is um, in irrigation. They'll, they'll put fertilizer in, into the water, so it's constantly fertilizing the crop. Um, but uh, it, for, for large-scale crops, you're only going to catch someone using synthetic ammonium nitrate if you're allowed to go out in the early spring uh, when, when they're making those applications to the fields. Well, that's an excellent explanation. As usual, you are an excellent advocate and explainer of these technologies. Let me just say, as both a consumer and as a food testing expert, I find 
that there is a complete lack of testing in both the known organic and the organic arena on a lot by lot basis and on two methodologies. One is on the grab sample basis on a statistical analysis and the other is in a wash water basis. My question to you is today's topic, government censorship of the analysis of organic labeling. Let's chat for a minute about what types of efforts have you seen by governmental and non-governmental groups to silence your message that there needs to be more analysis of what it means to be organically labeled. Well, that's a, a great way of putting it because because you're right. Uh, the regular food industry, I'm sure you'll agree, and, and you already alluded to this. They they don't do enough testing either. And what what the uh, the whole food industry has done over the years is moved to a hazard analysis model rather than a laboratory analysis. And hazard analysis basically means you're sort of watching yourself. You might get an inspector coming in, uh, but, but you're basically watching yourself, making sure your critical control points are being monitored. And uh, that's well and good for quality control. It was actually Pillsbury, uh, Pillsbury Dough that, that adopted that system from NASA, of all places. And it worked great. Uh, the, the, it was called HACCP, Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points. And that has kept astronauts safe in space. We have, for all the accidents that have occurred in the, in the space program, there's never been a case of foodborne illness. So Pillsbury thought, hey, what a great system, hazard analysis and critical control points. Let's adopt this to the food industry. And they did it on their own just to sort of keep track of things internally. What happened in the 90s was they took this system and decided that it wasn't just for quality control, sort of to keep your, you and your staff disciplined, but that it could be used as a, a regulatory or enforcement tool so that, in other words, an inspector could just come in and look at your house of paperwork and, you know, save him a lot of time, wouldn't it, Andy? He doesn't have to walk around the factory. He doesn't have to pull samples and send them to a lab. All he has to do is sit down and look at your paperwork. And I think that that's a huge logical problem, right, when you, when you take that leap. Um, you know, hazard analysis and keeping track of things internally works great. But it's not a good enforcement tool because you can just falsify all of that, that paperwork. So now, so as I say, we've seen sort of a watering down of testing protocols in the regular food industry. And if we fast forward to the late 1990s, what happened in the organic industry is they just went full bore. They just said, you know what, we, who needs testing at all? And, and so they didn't just reduce the amount of testing, they just eliminated it altogether. And uh, to his credit, uh, Bill Clinton in 1997-98, in um, you know, we, we, we'll never know how much direct involvement he had in writing the National Organic Program, but he was president at the time, and the buck stops there in the Oval Office. To his credit, the original drafts of the uh, National Organic Program were really heading in the right direction. There was going to be a lot more testing, and sadly, they ended up watering it down, as I say, and there was no testing. Now, some companies still do quality control testing. Uh, the USDA is planning to start requiring its 100 or so agents uh, to start testing, probably looks like about 1% of the time, and that's going to be on end product, not on uh, stuff that's still in the field where, where you would actually detect if someone was cheating. Um, but beyond that, there, there's, yeah, as I say, what they did with the organic program was just go full tilt and have no testing and rely completely on uh, the paper trail. Amazing. Let me ask you, from your perspective, and you've already alluded to it, Misha, what do you feel as an advocate of this identification and validation of organic labeling? has been engaged against you to silence your message. Right. Thank, thank you for reminding me. That was part of your, your question. And, yes, so by, by pointing this out, I'm suddenly the bad guy. And I've been pointing it out now for 15 years since I became an inspector in 98. And then I, I left the inspection business in 2003 and really started uh, drawing attention to it. 
and rather than clean it up, they, they just have been uh, attacking me and trying to uh, take away my credibility. And, uh, but more recently, this, this uh, sort of open-spirited debate has gotten kind of down and dirty because they're, they're working behind the scenes, as I mentioned, to, to try to get me fired. I do public speaking and consulting. I provide expert testimony in cases. And um, what's happening is some of the activists are going out ahead and finding out who's my next, who's my next uh, you know, bread-winning uh, employer, and, and they're trying to discredit me. And the specific charge is that I have fabricated my credentials. Um, I have taken every training through IOIA, which is the International Organic Inspectors Association. I have every training they offer. I have all the certificates to prove it. I even have HACCP training, which we mentioned earlier, uh, through the American Institute of Baking, which was set up by Pillsbury Dough back in the uh, 80s. And uh, I have all that training under my belt. Like my grandma used to say, uh, you know, getting a good education uh, it's not like luggage. You don't have to carry it around. It's, it's in your head. It's, it's, you know, it's like free weight. It doesn't weigh anything. And there you have it. I have all that training and education, and, and they're trying to claim that I've fabricated this. Well, so um, I guess I'll have to post my certificates on my website or something. But uh, as I say, Andy, that's, that's really a step too far for them to, uh, to try to get me fired. <laughs> and I think it just shows that they don't have a leg to stand on. Otherwise, they'd be they'd be you know fighting me on the facts instead of with innuendo. Well, Mishka, we certainly consider you to be a fiery advocate, and that actually is a banner of pride, and it shows your professionalism. The challenge that I think you're outlining today is that they are taking away from the facts, and they're making a personal ad hominem or a personal attack against you individually. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, and uh, I mentioned Bernie Madoff earlier. Everyone knows who Bernie Madoff is. Well, another name you might not have heard of is Henry Markopoulos. And Henry Markopoulos uh, was uh, also in the financial industry in, in Manhattan in New York. And he blew the whistle on Bernie Madoff. I like to sort of, sort of you know, align myself with him. And uh, he blew the whistle nine times, if you can believe it, believe it with the Securities and Exchange Commission, um, and they never did listen to him until Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme blew up. And it blew up because the economy was doing poorly and he couldn't keep it afloat anymore. And there's this uh, Markopolis guy. And suddenly people go, oh, <laughs> I guess he was right all along. Nine times, Andy. He, uh, he wrote and showed them how it was statistically impossible for Bernie Madoff's, uh, 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 you know, for, for him to be doing so well. And um, he, he would have had to be picking consistently the, the top 100 stocks all the time without making a single mistake. And no one would listen to him. So, yeah, I, I kind of uh, align myself with him. And, yeah, you're, you're right. It is, in the end, the badge of honor. But wouldn't it be nice to prevent the next Ponzi scheme? Wouldn't that be nice to prevent it rather than waiting for it to uh, blow up in our faces? Agreed. Well, Bernie, I've given you a platform to explain your position, perhaps with our audience of 76,000 food production, food quality, food safety, and food security managers. You can give us their final picture on how they can improve this organic labeling movement and consider you and weigh your analysis in their efforts to make food safe for all? Well, yeah, uh, organic food, by its very nature, is more susceptible to uh, E. coli, hepatitis, and as such. Because uh, from, from the very, very start, the organic industry rejected the perfectly safe technology of using synthetic ammonium nitrate pulled uh, ad infinitum from the Earth's atmosphere. So right away, the organic industry was on shaky ground. Now, with that said, I grew up on an organic farm. And I'm all for this as long as you do it right. It's kind of like eating, uh, you know, unpasteurized cheese from France. Well, just as long as you know what the risks are, it, it does taste a lot better. So we, we've got to just be super vigilant in the organic industry. We have to admit we're more susceptible to these problems. Um, and then we have to take uh, scientific objective steps 
to prevent any problems from, from cropping up. And what we need to do is test, 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 test in the field. Um, there, there's little point testing end product. I, I say it's kind of like testing an Olympic athlete after he goes home after the games. I mean, the uh, performance enhancing drugs coursing through his veins during the 100 meter dash, they're going to be long gone if you wait, you know, 30 days or something. So that's sort of what the USDA is finally doing. They're going to start testing, as I say, maybe 1% of, uh, of the uh, lots going through for, for certification. And, and what you've got to do is back up and test in the field. And so what I advise the people listening to do, if they're working for an organic company in any way, uh, either on contract or directly as an employee, is to encourage the company to start doing this. A lot of companies are doing it. And it's a huge step in the right direction. Now, no matter how far that goes, no matter how many people listening to this take that advice, there's still going to be a huge credibility problem at the end of the day. Because anyone listening who's, who's not you know, familiar with the, the, the actual workings of the food industry, just, just the average layman will wonder, well, why even have a regulator if that regulator isn't doing the test at the end of the day? If all the regulator is doing is checking paperwork, and in fact, what, what they actually do is rely on others uh, to check the paperwork for them. They're called the agents of the USDA. Those are the certifying agencies of which there are about 100 in America. If, if that's all they do, well, why even have them? And, and, and the answer, the reason they have the USDA is for the marketing, the, the power of the federal government to act as the marketing wing of the organic industry. So everyone listening to this should, should realize that, that no one likes that from the government. What we want from the government is for them to be the police, not the marketing agents. And so start testing on your own. Start doing your own internal quality control testing to make sure that all your suppliers are following the rules. And, but we, we've got to go that next step, Andy. We've got to get the USDA either out of the organic industry or get them to start testing. As I said, that was what the original intention was back in 97, 98 when Bill Clinton was the president. So it's, it's, it, 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 the, the time is nigh, as they say. There's no use waiting any longer. We've we got to start testing. And the maxim I like to use is one test per farm per year. If a farmer has 25 fields, no, you don't have to test all of them. If you show up unannounced and the farmer doesn't know which of the fields you might test and he doesn't know what you might test for, um, then that'll act as a, a huge step forward in objectivity for the organic industry. Well, Misha, you're much more forgiving than I am. Uh, as you know, my entire business model is a surveillance model of the product, and I espouse five test points at irrigation water, the pre-harvest sample, post-harvest sample in a bin or a tote, a wash water sample on a periodic basis during each wash, and the, a randomized finished product sample. If I had all of those five samplings, I could, with some verity, assure the consumer of a safe product on a bacterial pathogen basis. Your one test per product per year is much more liberal than my traditional analysis for human pathogens. Yeah, I'll admit that. And I guess it's because um, after 15 years of this, I've, I've honed my argument down to the point where I, 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 want, I want to be able to present it to the organic leadership in this country in such a way that they can't say no. Uh, so I've got it honed down to one test per farm per year. But you're absolutely right. I mean, if we're looking for it's, – it's one thing if we're looking for possible herbicide use. That might my, uh, my, my way will probably work. One test is all it would take to catch someone who's, you know, using something like Roundup or 2,4-D. But uh, you're right for, for when it comes to uh, fecal coliforms, which give rise to uh, pathogens which can uh, harm or kill humans – yeah, you're, you're probably right. Maybe five tests is a, a better place to start. And the point, though, let's agree on this, zero doesn't cut it. <laughs> no matter how much paperwork we have on top of that, uh, zero, zero is wrong. So, so we both agree we've got to move into the positive side of the ledger here when it comes to testing. Well, Misha, I'd really thank you for your time today. I feel your passion, and I endorse your efforts in general, and I am somewhat saddened by the thrust of today's interview, and that is, and if we can 
kind of wrap it up in a conclusionary remark on your end and a statement to the industry that there are actual governmental and quasi-governmental organizations that are seeking to silence your message by disparagement of your character and credentials. I find that to be very distressing. Go ahead. Yes, um, it is quite distressing, and um, I'm I'm trying to take it in my stride, but I can't help but wonder uh, how much how much work I'm missing out on, Andy. And uh, I don't want to, anyone to feel sorry for me personally, but I want everyone listening to just imagine anyone else uh, who might try to speak up. I mean, what if someone within a company says, "Hey, we we've got to be a better company in the organic industry." Well, is that person going to be silenced next? I mean, the message here is shut your mouth. And it's not just me. It's, it's everyone. It's anyone who cares. It's you too, Andy. I mean, you're, you're lucky you have your own business. And uh, so there's, there's no one above you to fire you maybe. But, but still, it, you, you just don't know uh, who out there might just decide to uh, make life difficult uh, for, for someone who's trying to do the right thing. And, um, and I, I just can't imagine how anyone could say, testing is bad. We test baby rattles, uh, cheeseburgers, minivans, everything is tested in this world except the one thing that cries out for testing and, and that, that's organic food. And I just do want to close on this note that I totally support the, the principles of organic production. But if we're not testing to make sure, sure those principles are being upheld, uh, then it's totally meaningless. We, we might as well just be dealing in the world of mysticism and magic. Testing is the only way to ensure that you're getting what you're paying for. Well, Misha, thank you for that concluding remark. And I endorse, obviously, the AMU Food Testing Show endorses the concept of not in, encouraging, what did you say, mysticism and magic, that we endorse scientific-based risk management analysis testing and labeling. And Mishki, I endorse everything that you're doing. I'm overboard on testing. And not to the point of, of ad nauseum. In other words, not necessary. Yeah. And from zero to one is good, but zero to absolute necessity is my endorsement. I'm more of an advocate than you are on testing. And I endorse your efforts. And anyone that tries to silence your message, I would encourage them to change that position. Sincerely. Yes, I I agree. And let's put it this way. As soon as I get the organic industry to start testing every farm at least once a year, then I'll join you and start pushing for five tests a year. But for now, I'm just trying to get one test right now. That's all I want. So uh, we're, we're definitely on the same page. I, I just have, as I say, I've just honed it down to try to make it difficult for the leadership to ignore this issue. Well, Misha, keep going. Don't yeah. let this bump in the road, stop you from endorsing your message, and let's keep in touch. If you get another topic, let me know. Let me know to how I can best support your message. You bet, Andy. I will. Thanks for the opportunity here. Well, you have a great day, and keep going. I will. You too, Andy. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye now. Bye.